if you get a teacher able to teach their specialization to yeah. a group of kids that can be anywhere in the world that can join that class by just putting a headset on and then look the teacher straight in the eye, ask questions, teacher can take them on a magical journey to you know, see something that they could never see in real life. You gotta convince me that that doesn't take off very quickly as soon as these devices are available for those teachers and students to put on. This right here is the uh, concert grounds, or parlor. Right. In fact, I bet we're gonna run a bunch of us into there. Is what I have to go for in about a half hour. Okay. Um, look at this. This is so cool. Okay. I haven't, I haven't seen this. So. Okay. Um, okay. So this is the site map. This is the festival map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the map. Okay. Where are we DJing, Charles? Oh, I gotta figure this one out. Isn't that cool? From the yeah. music space. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Excellent. But we do, we do quite a bit of DJing. I mean, you guys have seen that, but we, we do some really, it's pretty fun. I mean, we can give you a pretty, you can do a pretty solid job. The music business has changed massively over the years, and from, from everyone having albums to CDs, from yeah. the physical going, obviously, down because of cost and Spotify coming in, yeah. the whole 360 degree of an artist yeah. became so much more. So it became so much more about the live, and that's why you see so many people touring now. But with the ability of high fidelity and VR, then what will that look like in the future? Will it be an artist will then perform in a VR environment and, and have all their fans tune in in that VR? Why not? I mean, that's definitely one of, so when you look at the entertainment side of stuff, that's yeah, that, a definite possibility. The artists, yeah, I mean, there's so much changing about the uh, uh, D bundling. Like I was talking to some guys at Harvard where they have done a case study at the business school over the years on uh, Second Life. Mm. And I went back out there last year for sort of the 10 years on Second, they did a second case study on it again. Okay, wow, I okay, about it that'd be cool. Over the years. So I went out to you know defend the case study, but I was talking to the business school teachers there and we were talking about how inevitably, how hopefully High Fidelity and other you know, platforms are going to debundle uh, teaching. You know, they're going to take teachers uh, away from uh, the school. Like, you know, the, what will matter is the teacher. Hey, Christine. Can't hear Christine right now because she's on here, but she's uh, she's in there. Cool. Um, Christine is doing a lot of the setup for this. So she's <laughs> running around checking it out. Just checking everything out. Everything's Great. Really okay. But what we were talking about was just like you said that an artist. <laughs> A teacher, they the that it's in the nature of internet technology. Often, you know, of course, this is the case with microtransactions. You know, to to make things more efficient, and then when you do that, you generally get a smaller and smaller world around. You know, like an artist. Um, yeah. And so I think when we were talking about with teaching, that what's going to happen is it's not going to be about that you went to Harvard. It's going to be that you studied physics with Richard Feynman. You know, or right. whatever. And you'll get the certificate, maybe, you know, from that teacher or something. Right. And that, that, that will kind of, un, they were saying, unbundle. You know, in other words, a college is a, a university is a bundled set of teachers, you know, yep. put together under a brand. Yep. And they were saying, well, if, if you guys make it completely trivial for a teacher to gather a bunch of students in a space like this, it's going to have the effect that it'll kind of remove the middleman that is the university itself. We've really kind of doubled down on building out uh, within the EOS community. So um, I've pretty much taken the last six months of my, my life getting to know all the block producers, getting to know all the other VC funds, getting to know all the different communities around the world, getting to know all the different projects. Um, so when the time is right for us to really kind of assist and add value to what you guys are doing, we're getting it out into our network, we're more than happy to do that. I think today was a real pleasure to come and actually meet you face to face. Yeah. Uh, we're very aware of what you've done yeah, in the we past. We've got to figure out. Of course, we're you know talking to everybody about this and trying to get everybody helping us. We had you know well, we had the guys from uh, uh, Dan and, and company were here. Yeah. 
or at the other office uh, yesterday with Brad, my CTO. Um, but yeah, they had they had uh, Dan Larmer and, and company the guys that are here because I'm I'm doing this. Uh, when well, you guys are there too, right on Sunday? Judging, You're judging uh, it. Judging so. things. So I'll be there on Sunday. That's um, that that's a very it's a really great I think to be involved in in London I was one of the judges with mm -hmm. Dan and Brendan and mm -hmm. I've seen that yourself and Mike Novogratz and several other people yeah, so it's, uh, great, yeah. it's great to see uh, the younger techies devs come in and especially mm -hmm. when they have a challenge and they have to sort it out in such a period of time yeah, I'll be really but it's it's, it's great it's great to yeah. see and <laughs> I don't know what the challenge is yet and I'm not going to ask you if you know but hopefully it might be around something to do with <laughs> virtual <laughs> um, Philip thank you so Fair much enough. for your time cool. today yeah, um, it's been a pleasure meeting you, you dude yeah. and thank you thank, thank you, so, you so, much. so much and by the way thank you also so much for connecting with Charles and I know this guy really keeps on you and sends you all stuff <laughs> but uh, <laughs> really appreciate yes, you coming yeah. back and we're going to try to help you out in any way I'm currently with Philip Rosedale, co-founder of High Fidelity at the San Francisco office here today. So Philip, how's it going? It's going great. This is our new office the that new we're office. just moving into in the next few days. Congratulations. This place is amazing. It's huge. It is big. Yeah, <laughs> there's room for about 100 of us and we're, we're just a little over half of that right now. So we're hoping to grow pretty quickly here. So with virtual reality, how close are we for this to be adopted into the everyday lives of the masses out there? And when do you see that happening? Well, you know, a lot of the stuff that we've done with VR so far, or I should say the whole industry has done, has kind of been these demos. You know, there have been a lot of single player experiences, a lot of gaming. Right. I think there's two things that have to happen for VR to go where I want it to go. Um, the first thing is the hardware has to get portable and it has to get inexpensive. Um, this next year, 2019, we're going to have three products on the market, one from Oculus, another one from HTC mm. uh, Vive, uh, another one from Lenovo and other uh, Google, uh, you know, based daydream-based devices, and these devices are going to cost what a smartphone costs. Uh, Oculus has said its device is going to cost 400 bucks, wow. and uh, it's going to give you all the power that you've seen in the best experience that you've had in VR so far. But those experiences have been tethered with a wire to a PC, and this is going to be a thing like a baseball cap you put on, and you can walk around. You can walk around in an auditorium and the thing will track you <laughs> every step of the way. So the first thing is VR has got to, we got to get an inexpensive device that's like a smartphone that everybody can buy and have a reason to buy. The second thing is companies like myself, like High Fidelity, have to build the platform software so that people can do any kind of experience and get a bunch of people into that experience quickly. And that's going to enable things like teachers teaching students all over the world. Mm in one classroom, taking them on a trip to Mars, doing things like that. And that's going to happen starting next year as we get these inexpensive headsets. What do you think is going to be adopted the quickest? Would it be the education? Would it be, um, like, what, what application do you see? I think education is actually going to be a real runner. I mean, people may not find that as exciting as video games, but what I like to say is the video game market is about $100 billion. $100 billion. Now, that's big. It's doubled in size over the past mm -hmm. few years because of mobile. But the education market worldwide is more than $6 trillion. <laughs> So it's 60 times bigger. And if you get a teacher able to teach their specialization to yeah. a group of kids that can be anywhere in the world that can join that class by just putting a headset on and then look the teacher straight in the eye, ask questions. Teacher can take them on a magical journey to you know, see something that they could never see in real life. You've got to convince me that that doesn't take off very quickly as soon as these devices are available for those teachers and students to put on. And how far away do you think we are from that becoming a reality? Well, I think we're going to see some really interesting classes starting up next year as people start to buy these headsets. I mean, I know that we'll be in the same way, I, you know, you're standing in this uh, space here where yeah. we do experimental studio work, you know, whether it's music events or teaching, we basically put, you know, a bunch of kids, a bunch of people in headsets together at the same time. Um, as soon as these headsets come out, I'm going to be buying, you know, hundreds of them and giving them away to people, you know, just to get these sorts of classes going and see what we can do. You're definitely going to see the article about the geologist, you know, who's like, <laughs> you know, a volcanic geologist and she's basically doing a Thursday night special, you know, for kids that are interested in geology, right? And yeah. she's taking them on a, you know, into a 3D model of a Jumping volcano, volcano, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's, you're going to see those videos and those classes yeah. starting up next year as these headsets come out. That's what I think you're going to see. Thank you for welcoming us in your brand new office. Congratulations. This place is kicking. Well, it's a mess right now, but I think in a <laughs> couple of months, this is going to be quite a showcase. We'll be back for that. Don't don't worry. Thanks so much. Thanks,
And so where is the transaction actually happening? On, the, on those decentralized exchange. Yeah. On the decentralized exchange. Yeah, okay, we've okay. been working with several decentralized exchange and uh, through our app, we're gonna help you to, uh, you know, uh, give you the best price from those exchanges. It's gotcha. Like a, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. on your end, just to see your And then is there a revenue model that you guys have? Yeah, we do have a revenue model. Uh, as you can see, we have another feature is the Dapp Store. It's a EOS Dapp Store. We've integrated more than 50 Dapps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, EOS Dapp Store. Okay. Yeah, for example, uh, these ones, uh, yeah, like bad dice or, mm. yeah, we've integrated Shintai, Shintai as well. Shintai, okay. Yeah, that's we just uh, talked to EOS42. That's people. David from EOS42. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. We just <laughs> talked to them. <laughs> Did you? Okay. Yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wicked. Excellent. Now, how do you make money off the Dapster? Is there a revenue model on that? Yeah, so yeah for example, you play bad dice on our platform, or you user play it, and uh, they're going to get a revenue, right? We, we, share the, we share their profit from our platform. Okay, so but yeah. now I'm in the bet dice uh, platform. It's yeah. that because it's rooted through your app store that they know that it's come true. Uh, so so what I'm looking at in bet dice is that sitting in where where? It's it's on our uh, platform. It's on your they, platform. Yeah, they don't need to uh, re-download this app or like redirect it to other gotcha. websites. Gotcha. Understood. Yeah. Okay, and that's how the revenue model breaks yeah. out. Yeah. Now the project is launching, and you're generating revenue. Yeah. Um, is there anything that we can do for you? Um, do you? Do you need any help? And what does that look like? Yeah, good. Um, so right now we are looking for like uh, EOS communities, uh, uh, investors, and also like uh, communities early, like early supporters for us. Since we are like uh, right now is uh, really early, we we want to like accelerate our product and hiring more people, uh, and you know uh, acquiring more users, like do user growth stuff. So we kind of need first kind of like investors, EOS community investors. We we wanted to work with EOS community. But yeah, um, are you? talking about having access to the community and building your brand are you looking for actual funding because they're two different things but your platform already has a revenue model so um, is your platform not making sufficient revenue to run your business uh, not sufficient okay. yeah so as you because can see, it's yeah, just it's the beginning we can yeah. show that this reven revenue model works but, yeah uh, but it's at early stage. It's early stage. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, how many unique users or active users do you need to be breaking even? Oh, we, oh, we never calculate yeah. that. Okay. But it should be yeah, significant amount yeah. of okay. users. Okay. So, I suppose for me, I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. You know, is the business viable? Right. Like, yeah. is it that you need four hundred thousand users, and 5,000 active users per day, or is it you need 4 million users and, I don't know, a million yeah. active users? And if so, then is your cost base too high? Mm -hmm. Are your profits just too low mm -hmm. in the regards to margin? So I'm just trying to figure that out. Because um, you've got a business, you've launched it, it's active. Yeah. You've got revenue coming in, but yeah. you're losing money. So that's always a a point that you really need to understand from a due diligence standpoint. So what do you do? What's your tour? We are a after incubator that based in Boston. Okay. Based on just focus, more focus on the yields yeah. to get the tip top development. Okay. Have you seen some of the stuff that we're doing in London? <laughs> it's like, it's just blowing up. Um, and we have to realize that we're right at inception. I always say that we're kind of like 1992, 1993, the internet. Do you remember how many people had no idea what was going on back then? Well, you're a young guy. Um, but let me tell you, um, trying to get connected to the internet in the mid-90s took literally 10 minutes. And it was kind of like buying and selling cryptocurrency on exchanges now. But guess what? When I want to connect to the internet now, I hit this one button called Google and I'm on it. So all these issues that we have about lack of knowledge, low adoption, can't understand, that will all get resolved. But this will take time. And it's our job to go out there and to try and educate. And how do you do that? Well, you do exactly what you're doing here today. You're getting a meetup of people in and you're talking about different protocols or different blockchains um, or different investment opportunities. Um, and it's, it's a step by step, brick by brick. 
Who's working on this with you? You and who else? So I lived in Russia for six years. Okay. So I have like <laughs> years. <laughs> so, from where were you living in Russia? Uh, yeah, I, I studied nanotechnology and microelectronics engineering in Russia. Wow, and did, and did, did you do so that in Russian, Russian or did yeah, you do in Russian, in Russian, in Russian. So I learned Russian in four months. I, know. I learned Russian in four months. Crazy and then I, I lived in St. Petersburg, you know, I picked up the whole language and I got many <laughs> friends. And but, so most of yeah. my engineers are in Russia, right? Got yeah. it. But get so, it, from what you told me, it seems to me that you met this guy and he's pretty interested from Live Nation. And he's just kind of come to you saying, we were interested, we were also interested in EOS. And now you're in a situation where you're like, I want to try and do something here, but maybe it would be insightful to reach out to some of the other people like us to maybe help yes. you bring the level of detail and insight to maybe help them. Okay, okay, here's what we're going to do. You've yeah. got, have you, have, did I give you my card? Yeah, you gave me your okay. card, yeah, yeah. You're going to send an email to myself and Shane. Yeah. CC and that guy. We're yeah. going to book a call in together. And really no, no, understand I'm not going anywhere. I'm, t I'm giving you my card. Awesome. Sit yeah. down. Oh, I understand <laughs> what's going on. Okay, okay so who, who has built this with you? I built it with okay. my co-founder right. and then my whole team in Russia. And, any, and then yeah. my, okay. my, my, so we have three founders, right. me, the other guy is in London right now. And Who's he? Who's in London? He's Brian, my co-founder. Okay. I have two co-founders. Okay. What, what, does, he, what right does he do in London? He wants to see his girlfriend. His girlfriend lives in London. So he goes to London very often. Yeah, they're pretty women in London. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you're talking about your business. You're not talking about this deal in particular. You're what have you actually built? Are you, are, are you building? So let, 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 let's, let's, okay. So let's yeah. forget about what you built on Ethereum. What have you done on the EOSIO protocol? Right now, on the EOS of protocol, we've not done anything. So, what are you thinking? Let's do a call next week. Yeah. Let's get uh, Gideon and the guy. Can you do you have a relationship with the guy? I, I have a relationship. Where is he based? Where is he based? He lives in LA. He lives in LA. Yeah, yeah. So he's got ten time zone as us. Yeah. So let's take advantage of that. We're here on Tuesday. Let's book a call on Monday or Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday. So I will write him an email tonight or tomorrow yeah. morning. Tonight. Uh, tonight, yeah. yeah. I'll write him an email tonight. Yeah, yeah. it's Michael. We, we, we really talk like, we became yeah. kind of close, right? I have his number. So I'll write him an email and text him. And then we can see how we can book a call. And, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. And see how we can do it. Oh, you know what Charles is going to say. I'd write an email right now. You got your computer? I <laughs> <laughs> have on WhatsApp. He doesn't know this yet, but I have him on WhatsApp. Okay. Um, I Gideon, I'd, I'd love to see how we can help you out. Yeah. Um, sounds compelling. Need to That's see nice. everything that you've got. You yeah. know what I mean? But good man. Thank right. you so much for your time. Guys, hey, how are you? Hey, nice to see you. Yeah, how are you? Well, good, yeah. everything cool. Hey, Elias. Nice, nice to meet you, you Elias. Hi. What's your name? Yeah. Nice to meet you, Mary. Okay, so you're going to be around. Yes. I'm okay. Gonna well, cool. Around. I'm going to be here anywhere for a moment. But listen, great to see you. I love to see EOS Dublin in the house. What's happening, Isaac? I'm Shane. Nice to meet you. Hi, hey, I'm Ryan. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Are you well? I'm doing super well. I like to see you just propping up the bar. Hey, here I am. And I see you've met two of my other uh, oh, yeah. partners in crime. How are, you, uh, uh, how are you enjoying your California trip? Oh, mate, I'll tell you what, Santa Monica. Oh, for that. Oh, I used my to God. I live in Mar Vista, which is like just. Uh, it's a, it's a slight bit east of there, but like it's right in that Mar or sorry, right in that Santa Monica, Venice area. Oh, my God. I love West LA. Oh, man. my God. It's When do you anticipate that to get finalized? Two, two weeks. Two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah, we've been talking for over a month. They, they just asked for so many documents. Of course. Okay, there's a questionnaire about the token. There's a questionnaire about the founders, and then yeah, you just need to get them all the kind of. Um, I, I'm yeah. very aware of what you have to go through to do it, um, but once it's done, I think it's 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 yeah, yeah. a really good solution for what you're doing. It's great to see you on and push on, and it's great to see you on to um, leverage the business and really attack the market, but. I think our interests have to be aligned, right? Well, and uh, and uh, there has to be willing to negotiate. Yeah. Uh, sure. Oh, listen, you, you have to start somewhere, exactly, right? Yeah. I, I get that. And my job is not here to beat you up on your valuation. My job is to understand, well, at what price do we manage our downside risk and make it compelling enough to want to invest, okay. right? And how do we look at the business over a, you know, five to 10 year period? And um, we want the same upside that you get. And when you start pricing something at 10 million, 
that has no revenue, that's still an MVP, that doesn't have any adoption, that can be a difficult conversation. Okay. So, so what, what do you think at this, like, what, what kind of number would you put for uh, this kind of uh, early stage startup? Uh, we've seen anywhere from two to five. And that's compelling, because it's like, now we've got a, a valuation whereby we're in at a level whereby we've set the bar low, so in order to have a, another round, or in order to execute, if these guys do what they say, then we're remunerated and we can mark it up. We have a profit. But I'm not saying you're a two to five. I'm just saying they are some of the compelling cases that when something comes in with that valuation, we're like, ooh, okay, that looks interesting. When someone comes in with a valuation of $100 million, it's like, really? Come on, it's like, it doesn't even get any further.